Hey everyone, hope you are doing awesome. Welcome back to my channel Pega Heart with another video. Thanks everyone for subscribing to my channel and if you haven't hit the bell icon yet, please do so you won't miss any of my videos. Please hit the like button or leave me a feedback or comment if you like the video or the way I have explained. Today we are going to learn hands on about how to use requested database with a real time scenario. I would strongly recommend to watch my database introduction, database thread and node level use case videos before you proceed with this video. I would provide the link in the description or you can find the same by going to my channel. By now I believe you would have imported the zip file and have finished the hands on that I have covered in the database thread and node level video and you also know about the use case so I won't spend time explaining the same again. Today's video is a continuous of the previous wherein we are going to do hands on on the requester level database and also I will show how to clear the database dynamically. So without doing any further delay, let's get into it. Uh, to proceed further, let's quickly create um, uh, a declare expression for this subtotal so that you know uh, it you can uh, this this will be automatically calculated. Now to do that, what I need to do is I just need to quickly see which property it is. So if I go to live UI, it is total amount. Now if I just click on this total amount and I'll just uh, say total amount right, I'll cancel it, uh, turn off the live UI. Now I actually know the uh, class so let me go directly instead of going this way. So this order detail is where I've created, now in the order detail let's quickly create a declare expression. So cre create decision and declare expression, right and declare expression my target property which is my target property is total amount is my target property. Now uh, I'll keep this as is here, don't put any page context because it will automatically uh, take the default page context. Um, if you don't put also now here what I'm going to do okay description uses I'll leave that for the time being what I'll do sum of what is my sum of my uh, order detail so I need to calculate so basically what uh, I need to do I need to calculate of my total price so here if I go to the IVI I'll see what which property I've used I'll say total price right so sum of my total price so I'll cancel it here I'll go to the declare expression I'll say order detail dot total price. This is how it's going to calculate the uh, this one. So now if I, uh, I'll, because it's refreshing anyway. So if I refresh this uh, to ice cream and uh, you see you put this one automatically, this is calculated. Now my subtotal has been calculated. Now what's next? Now let's quickly understand about this employee discount applied. Now see employee discount applied, I mean the name itself indicate right, it belongs to an employee isn't it and an employee is nothing but an operator ID that's it right in, in our supermarket use case uh, the employee is nothing but an operator. So when a discount specific to that operator that means any uh, detail that we are going to fetch uh, from the database has to be part of my uh, request level database right. That's where because uh, let's say employee one will have uh, let's say two three option but employee two might have another option. If employee three is a manager he might have more uh, option or she might have more option. So that is how you are going to define this employee discount applied um, uh, and you can define this data page in a request level so that it will be specific to that particular employee and if that employee no matter how many cases that employee will create. Uh, automatically you can have that uh, uh, you know discount for all the cases that's how you're gonna share the discount across the cases that particular employee create if manager will create then man it, it should show only the discount that apply to manager right so that's the reason why we need to go with this kind of database in requester level now let's create a database that is in the order detail which we are going to uh, uh, use as a node uh, sorry uh, requester level database now data model database you create the database let's uh, say uh, fetch employee discount is the database name okay now I'll say create and open now as this employee discount can be potentially a list right because one employee can have uh, you know multiple let's say if I'm, if I'm a manager I can give 5% 10% depending on you know uh, something so here the source, let's say it is going to get it from, uh, you know, your uh, uh, connector uh, from, from another API. But unfortunately that API is not there. If you remember in my introduction section, I told, you know, how to simulate data source. If the API is not there, what you can do is temporarily we'll simulate this data source. So basically I'm, I'm going to hard code this, uh, this one. 
I wanted to show you how you're going to do if your uh, source is not ready. So that's the reason why I'm covering this as part of this. Here I'll just put Pega because obviously I'm simulating in Pega in the data transform six. Uh, okay. So when I simulate this data source, all the uh, um, sources are changed. Now I have got only four. Let me go at the simple one, which is my data transform. Now here the scope I'm going to change to uh, requester. Okay. And uh, everything is okay. Now here, fetch employee discount discount now one thing i wanted to tell you uh, about this the moment i change the structure is this right now if you see if i click on the drop down now it would expect me to go and uh, create the detail in code hyphen pega hyphen list because when you have a list pega would automatically pega wouldn't expect you to create a, a, a data page of list type instead pega would say you create all the uh, you know uh, data transform or everything in the code hyphen pega hyphen list so that Pega will, uh, if for the list type of uh, data page, Pega will hold the result in PX result. So that's the reason why, it, so if I do uh, fetch employee discount, it's gonna, you know, tell me to create code hyphen Pega hyphen list. You just create as is there, don't change anything here. Now here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a set and I'm gonna use this, um, uh, what's a PX uh, result, uh, 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 this one, page list property, put one. Uh, temporarily what I'm going to do so instead of see either I can create a uh, object there and I'm gonna uh, uh, store the value but instead of I'm gonna use uh, a um, OTB property okay just to make it fast so let's say I'll say 5% uh, uh, discount 5% discount and let's say if I say uh, set I'll give another one uh, let's say 2 2 Oh, okay now what i'm going to do is let me put uh, also a when condition so that depending on the requester i'll show you how it vary right so now if i put a when condition here um so let's say I, i'm going to choose operator because i'm hard coding right i'm going to choose my operator to get my operator what i'm going to do is i'll go uh, get the clipboard page in the system page i'll have all the defined operator now here you, you see operator id so define this operator id uh, uh, page in the page and class operator id where i'm going to choose data hyphen admin hyphen operator id somewhere here data hyphen admin hyphen operator id that's the class and here i'm going to choose operator id uh, sorry let me copy that's the best way Cop operator id uh, dot i'll say uh, where is on okay px operate or i'll say uh, user identifier okay py user identifier i'm going to use this one I'll say data hyphen operator ID dot py user identifier equal to equal to if it is me equal to equal to let's say if it is uh, this one then I will say I'll say give 5% discount only okay so I'll just go and drag it here okay now let's create another sibling below another when condition where i'll say if my py this one when condition okay here i'll say uh pega hurt admin i'll use another operator okay i'll just quickly uh create another operator okay now if it's a pega hurt admin then probably i'll say give two more discount Basically, I want to show you how uh, paste below and I'll say paste below here. I'll change it to node 2 here. I'll set uh, in person Manager discount. Let's say right now uh, Good. Okay. So yeah, depending on the operator it will uh, give me that one now here What I'll do is I'll say, save this one now, if I run this data uh, uh, page, now if let's say if I run this uh, data page, there is a potential chance you may get or you may not get depending on. You got only one because if you see, I'm running as a, um, uh, what do you say? Uh, I'm running as a employee ID, uh, which is already there, right? Which is already there. But if I would run as an employee ID, which is not part of my when condition, obviously they won't get anything, okay? Now let's integrate this, uh, uh, to our uh, section now i go to collect uh, section here what i'm going to do is i'll go to action i'll say same uh, on click i would say right 
on quick i would say uh okay hang on before action i need to face the detail right so here what i'm going to do is i'll say placeholder i'll put sx like this and here i'll say uh, uh, data page and the data page name is the employee discount and uh, um, the property value that i'm i'm storing is py note right so i'm gonna put this one and i was just thinking whether i need to uh, do a refresh and all but i don't think i need to do a refresh so that at the moment so let's uh, delete this action set submit save now let's go ahead and create another case so what i'm going to do is i'll do a save and run and uh, once that is run so what what also i would do is i'll turn on the tracer and the background just to make sure that you guys should see and now i'll put customer id one two three that's the first step i'll go there now the moment i go over here oh I forgot to uh, uh, on the tracer, but okay. So as you could see, this five percent discount came, right? So that means in the background, it would obviously the uh, requested uh, uh, data would not be there. In the background, it would, it would have been loaded. Now let's do one thing. Let, let's uh, pause over here and create another case. Okay. So I, I'll just show you where in the clipboard you can find. If you go to the clipboard here. Uh, and then in the data page section, go to the requester section and here you will find uh, that data page. Uh, so D uh, underscore fetch employee discount as, as you could see here uh, in the PX result, in the result I've got 5% discount. So this data page belongs to requester level, right? So that means this data page would have been loaded. Now, uh, as it is uh, loaded as part of, part of the requester, so no matter how many cases I'll create, it should not load it again, right? So let me create another case and now here I'll just uh, uh, put one, two, three and get the details and then I'll play the tracer and I'll just quickly go ahead and continue. The moment I continue, you, you could see this uh, is being loaded, right? Let's quickly see if, uh, uh, you know, what in the background has been uh, happened. So if you see the fetch employee discount, so everywhere this data page has been referred. Uh, so you could see only this many uh, search are there everywhere this data page has been referred it has been found and it is fresh because it's in the requester uh, node uh, a requester mode right now let, let's consider that you are going to log in a different user let's say i'll log in as a pega hut admin and then uh, let's see how it works right so uh, okay now here i log in as a pega hut admin now what i'll do is i'll go to the app and i'll create a sorry i'll go to cache type Okay, uh, let me change the application to uh, learn database and then I'm going to create a case. So I'll go to the uh, app or sorry, case type. I'll click on order and now, uh, okay, I'll do a save and run. Okay, over here, first thing is I'll put one, two, three and is, as you could see, there is nothing right now here. What I'm going to do is I'll click on clipboard. If I'll show you even before this load. So if you see in the requester, D underscore uh, fetch employee discount, right? Uh, so I'll just quickly see uh, D underscore fetch employee discount, right? So as you could see, there is no uh, D underscore fetch employee discount. Now what I'm going to do is this is the other tracer. Now I'll turn on the tracer for this requester and I'll click on continue. You would see because it's a different requester altogether. So that's why when the uh, uh, data piece is being referenced, so when the database has been referenced, if you see this database is uh, database load begin loading in the requester scope and that's where it loaded and over here, once this load is finished, then it has got to discount 5% and 10% discount. And once uh, that is uh, loaded everywhere, this database has been referred, they are not going to load it anymore. So uh, th see, this is the beauty. Now, uh, uh, Pega Hut uh, admin being a manager, now Pega Hut ha admin has got two discount, 5% discount and 10% manager discount, depending on, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, how much uh, they want to, you know, offer to the employee, it's up to them. Now, similarly, if, Pe uh, if the same uh, uh, user is going to uh, create another uh, case, let's say if I'm going to create another uh, case as Pega Hut admin, now what will happen is I'll give here and then I'll say play and I'll, the moment I continue now it's not going to load anymore because uh, as the scope defined it's a requester node uh, scope, requester level scope. So no matter how many cases this requester will create it will still uh, you know get the details from data, uh, data uh, clipboard page instead of getting the details from the uh, uh, you know source. So this is the beauty of requester uh, data page and you need to understand that uh, if, uh, if the data is valid for a requester session during that time only you would uh, define this um, database under this code now i hope this is clear
Now let's move to the last point where I am going to explain how to create a database. Now let's understand how you can uh, create the database dynamically. So, uh, okay, first thing is how you can clear the database is all we need to understand, right? So if I go to any database over here, let's say this is the database. So there are three ways that you can potentially cre uh, clear a database. One is a static way where you can come to load management and you do clear a database. And once you uh, clear the database, if the database has got parameter, then you could be able to see over here and you i mean uh, you know you had seen multiple database being in the uh, clipboard right when i have a parameter page then it, there is a way that you can have multiple clip, uh, you know parameterized uh, database so there uh, if it is a, it is having a parameter then it will ask for you which parameter page you want to clean if you don't want to uh, have that parameter clean, then you can do a plus all, which will clear everything that is there in the database. And you do submit, it will auto clear everything, right? So this is how uh, it's going to clear. Now, uh, so the parameter one, which I told, if I go to just, uh, instead of the least, if I just go to the normal one, I'll just show you here. Uh, if I go to normal one where I have got a so here if you see I have got a parameter right so if I go to load management and if I do a clear database it asks for me parameter so either you can clear all the database that is there in the uh, clipboard or you can uh, create a specific database with uh, by giving the right parameter that's one way right so this is a static way now dynamic way how you can do uh, so let's say for example when uh, before loading a database so here you are loading right before loading a database what you can do is uh, in dynamic way there are two uh, uh, in dynamic uh, method there are two ways that you can do it the first way so as i have already explained you that this database is nothing but a normal page in clipboard right so you can always go with the remove command so I can always go with the remove command. Now let's say for example, if this is a parameter and I know this parameter is going to be constant. So all I need to do is just, you know, uh, do like this. Uh, obviously you, you need to set this parameter over here uh, on the top. And then I'll say remove this one. And the moment I remove, it will remove that uh, page from the clipboard. So, and then when uh, you are going to refer it, is, it is gonna load again. So this is one way where you can uh, remove this uh, data page. The another, uh, which is the right way, I would say, there is an activity called uh, uh, PZ plus, uh, which is plus database, which is sitting in the base class. So if I see, so, okay, there are a lot of activity, but I use this activity, which will help me to, uh, you know, clear uh, the database from all the node, uh, plus all instances. And also, uh, uh, you know, you can use the parameter to plus uh, for a specific parameter. So if I open this PZ plus database, right, you would see in the parameter. So this is an OTB activity, which Pega provides. And you see the parameter, you uh, need to provide database name and you, you have multiple parameter option. And then you have a Boolean value called plus all instances. You can check uh, if you want to plus all instances, then you need to just uh, set it to true. You don't need to pass any parameter. And then you just, you know, to specify the database name. If you don't want to, it's the exactly whatever we had done in the static one. It's the exactly uh, which you can do it dynamically. You can say plus all instances true, pass the database name when you wanted to um, uh, plus all the instances. If you are wanted to, uh, plus only a specific parameter in uh, parameterized instances, then you just need to pass the right parameter and make plus all instances as false. So uh, yes, uh, so these are the uh, way that you can clean the database uh, dynamically and also uh, in a static way. That's it for today and hope you understood clearly. Please hit the like button if you learned something or you like the way I have explained and leave me a comment if you have any queries or feedback for me. It will help me to improve and also motivate me to post more concepts and videos. As I always tell, sharing is caring. So do share with others so people who do not know about my channel will be benefited. Stay tuned for my next video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe and click on the bell notification for my new video updates. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.